among the things that we're faced with, extreme views, is also the madhab. You come into Islam, you awaken to Islam, and what is presented before you is Shafi Islam. Here. If it happened in Pakistan, it would be Hanafi Islam. If it happened in Sudan, it would be Maliki Islam. If it was in Saudi Arabia, it would be Hanbali Islam. This is what you are presented with. And those who promote this idea, who say you must follow a madhab, you must follow one of these four. Otherwise, your imam is shaitan. So they will tell you. In fact, they even make up statements saying that among the questions you will be asked in the grave after who is your Lord, what was your religion, who was your prophet, what was your madhab? I've read it. It's gone to that extreme. Reality, of course, is that is an extreme view. It wasn't revealed, although when you go into those who are fanatical, they have hadiths, which they claim Rasulullah said, that they would arise amongst the ummah. You know, such and such a person who had these qualities and so on. You say, ah, oh, that's Abu Hanifa. Of course, those are the ones you read in Pakistan. Then if you go to Egypt, it will be, that's Imam Shafi they're talking about, that hadith. So on and so forth. People actually fabricated hadith to defend this. And of course, because it was an extreme it was an extreme which came about really after the 13th century. It really became deep-rooted. When you look at the consequences besides the fabrication of hadith, and you consider that from the 13th, 14th century, in the Hanafi school, the scholars ruled that it was not permissible for a Hanafi to marry a Shafi'i. They can marry a Christian or a Jew, but not a Shafi'i. This is extreme. This is extreme. And of course, around the Kaaba, for hundreds of years until 1925, hundreds of years, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century. Muslims were praying around the Kaaba four different prayers. Hanafis prayed separately. Shafi's prayed separately. Hanbalis prayed separately. Maliki's prayed separately. You see all the old pictures of the Kaaba. You'll see these structures around the Kaaba called Maqam Hanafi, Maqam Shafi'i, Maqam Hanbali, Maqam Maliki. Until 1925, when the quote-unquote Wahhabis came, and they broke down all of these structures, and the Muslim world screamed, look at these madmen, look what they're doing. They broke them down. And they say everybody have to pray behind one imam. If that's all they did, that's enough to say the Wahhabi movement 
brought great good back to the Uba. If that's all, So this was an extreme. The question is, the big question, when considering this whole issue of madhab, is what was the madhab of Abu Bakr? He certainly wasn't any of the four. What about Omar and Uthman and Ali? So their Imam was Shaitan? A'udhu Billah. So then what? Actually, when you go and you study the madhabs, you will come to realize very quickly that Abu Hanifa wasn't a Hanafi. And Imam Shafi'i wasn't a Shafi'i. Nor was Imam Malik a Maliki. Or Ahmed ibn Hanbal Hanbali. These madhabs evolved. They came into being way after their time. 100 years, 200 years after their time. They formulated themselves. And they continue to evolve to practices that those great imams, those great scholars, never taught. But now it's called Hanafi Madhab. <laughs>